Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and I think you saw from the introduction or I think you might have got an idea of what we're going to do in today's video. This is my uh, can crusher. Uh, th this is probably one of the first projects I did out here in the Tin Barn. I suspect 10-12 years ago. Uh, it's a Pittman rod uh, can crusher. Drop the can down in here, and of course, as it rotates, it'll crush the can and fall out the bottom. When I first built this, uh, I didn't have lathe out here, or uh, I did have a welding machine, but uh, nothing more than a hacksaw to cut material with. So what I did was use this, uh, looks like maybe a six inch pulley, cast aluminum pulley or cast uh, monkey metal and put this uh, piece of flat bar on the side of it to drive the pitman rod to get the the pitch that I needed or the uh, throw that I needed uh, to get the length on the pitman rod. Just as thrown together with just an old turnbuckle that I came in a box lot uh, just some shelving board, a uh, piece of 4x4. Four four. We'll look at this, the workings of it a little bit later, but over the years of using it and getting it in a bind when a can would get uh, uh, in there sideways or whatever reason and it would get in a bind, this is all warped now. This gear motor, as best I can tell, is a uh, garage door gear motor. Uh, I say that only because if if the crusher gets in a bind going in one direction, if it gets in a bind, it will actually stop and reverse and go in the other direction. Now I found as far as uh, crushing cans, it crushes best if the crush is on this bottom stroke right here. But again, what we're going to do today is take this pulley off and see if we can't make something else. Now we don't need a piece of metal this big around. We're just going to uh, make a core to go over, uh, probably use some two inch stock and bore it out to fit the motor shaft and then put a long arm on here to get again get a, the, the desired wrench. So let me get a few tools and we'll take this apart. That motor shaft looks kind of worn or kind of abused there. I don't think this did it. Uh, may have. Yeah, this is definitely twisted on it. It's twisted on the shaft. But I think it'll be fine for a can crusher. So let's go back into the uh, workbench in there and take some measurements and see what we need to do. All right, before we go back in the workbench in there, I'm going to take the file and see if I can clean this uh, motor shaft up just a little bit. Let's see if we can get an idea about what this shaft was. As I say, said earlier, this shaft is boogered up pretty good. 622, that was a 5H uh, shaft. All right, I just uh, sawed off a piece of my two-inch stock, old rusty two-inch stock. This is about, I don't know, eight and a quarter, eight and a half inches long. We're going to clean up this, uh, uh, turn it enough to clean it up. I only need about two, two and a quarter inches for the piece we're making for the uh, can crusher. But I'm going to go ahead and clean, clean this up uh, so that I've got a longer piece of stock available. 
All right. I'm going to use, again, use my uh, roller bearings here to get that running pretty straight in the, uh, in the lathe. All right, now I'll just go ahead and clamp down pretty good. And this has got saw cuts on both ends, so I know it's not square. But now that I've got it running reasonably true, we're going we're gonna to put a center in there and uh, then hold this in with the live center. All right, that should be held in place pretty good, and we're going to... I'm sure we're going to destroy one of the uh, tips on this insert. And we're going to touch off here. And I'm going to try to get below most of the rust in one pass. Alright, so there's 20, 40, 60. I'm going to see if this little lathe will, will turn uh, 80 thousandths, that's 40 on each side. Now I think I'll use some coolant too. And let's go ahead and see if I can make a little use out of this uh, shield that we made in the last video. Alright, that pretty much cleaned up all the way around. There's a there's a couple of little pits right there. I'm gonna turn this around in the lathe, uh, line it up with the ball bearings again, and clean this end up. I'll bring you right back when we get ready to start working on our piece. Alright, I got about two and a half inches of the other end. I turned it around in the lathe, uh, did the same routine of lining it up and putting the center in. And I got about two and a half inches here cleared off uh, or cleaned up. And I think I'll run just a little piece of emery cloth on that. And then we'll carry it over to the saw and saw it off. And for running the emery cloth, I can get tail stock out of the way and the compound as well. Cross slide. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to carry this over to the saw now. I'm going to carry it over to the saw, saw it off, then I'll come back and we'll start working on our pulley piece. While that's over there on the saw, I want to give you a quick little update on the happenings here at the Tin Barn. If this goes as scheduled, this video should be airing on October the 30th. Uh, as I said in my last video, uh, wife and I are planning a trip out to the Midwest. At the time you see this video, we should have been out there for about a week now. Uh, today, uh, again, the day that this is airing, October the 30th, uh, Saturday, we should be flying back to North Carolina tomorrow on the 31st. I'm trusting at this point that we will have had a great vacation out in the uh, lower southwest. Uh, our plans this year was not to get into a lot of crowds, just do a whole lot of back road driving and seeing some sights of uh, Southeast Arizona. So again, <clears throat> as you're seeing this tomorrow, the wife and I should be getting on a plane headed back to North Carolina. So keep us in your thoughts and your prayers. We appreciate it. All right, we're back from the saw now. And I, I realized I didn't need near as long as I had uh, measured off there. I had two and a quarter almost two and a half and really only need about an inch and a half I, I forgot the spacers that was on, were on the pitman rod so we're going to face off one end now
Maybe we can take a little bit more there. That wasn't quite cleaning up. We're going to come in, zero out the z-axis right there. And we want to come in seven, about seven hundred thousandths. And we're going to take that seven hundred thousandths down to an inch and a quarter, which is what will slide, slide over our shaft. So I'm just going to take make a eighty thousandths pass again and we'll get a measurement. One point seven eight nine. I'll put those dimensions into the DRO. All right, so that's five hundred thirty eight thousandths we need to take off. Let's see where we're at here. DRO says we've got about 63 thousandths to go. And the calipers say we've got about 75 to go. So we're going we're gonna to take another 80 because that outside dimension is by no means critical. That should be a little less than an inch and a quarter. 1.235. Okay. All right, I suspect that's going to be plenty warm, but I want to turn that around in the lathe now and face off that other end, and then we'll drill it. Okay, that wasn't plenty warm, it was plenty hot, so I carried it over to some nice cool water and calmed it down a little bit. So what we want to do now is face this off, and then we're going to drill it for the 5 8 didn't quite clean up. We'll get another cut. Alright, let's put us the center in. That actually still had a partial center in it from where we uh, uh, cleaned off the uh, the starting piece, starting work piece. I'm going to drill a pilot hole with a quarter inch here. We'll drill all the way through, of course. Now, I don't have a 5 8 reamer, uh, so I went ahead and drilled a test piece with a uh, 5 8 drill. This is a fairly new drill, probably hadn't ever drilled but a couple of holes. And this test hole worked fine on that shaft, even though it was boogered up a little bit. I think, uh, I think the majority of the diameter of that motor shaft is still there. I believe there was just some burrs on it from where the set screw had twisted on it. Drill this out with a 5 8 now. We'll slow our RPMs down considerably. I think we're ready to turn over to the mill, but before that I need to go to the workbench and do a little calculation. So I'll meet you over at the mill. Before we turn over to the mill, uh, I've got you over here on the workbench now, 
and I'll show you where we are so far. As I said earlier in the video a couple times, this shaft on the motor is, is boogered up pretty good. Uh, uh, it looks like this old piece might have might have twisted on it some and I'm I'm just not sure what uh, got it, but this will fit over it pretty good. There's there's a little play in it. Uh, so what I'm going to do over at the mill is put two uh, quarter twenty grub screws or set screws at ninety degree angle to each other. This also has a five thirty second hole in it, and I'm thinking after the two grub screws, I may very well drill this as well for a uh, 530 second spring pin and run that through uh, our coupling and the motor, motor shaft. Just according to how much meat looks like it's left after I put the set screws in. Now this piece, remember the wart piece that we're uh, Replacing in this video, uh, broke out pulley. From this center line here that actually turned on the motor center to this hole that the pitman rod uh, connected to was four and a quarter inches. So I've taken this a piece, uh, let's see, this was an inch and a half by a quarter inch thick. Uh, material. What I've got here is a piece of 3 8 uh, material and uh, let's say 3 8 by 2 inches and I've got centers marked off uh, at the 4 and a quarter. We're going to line the, uh, the mill up on one of these centers and we won't need to do a bolt hole pattern. We're just going to step over uh, let's see 0 0.615 inches from center in four directions on the X and Y and in this piece put four holes that will clear a quarter inch uh, quarter twenty bolt and then in this piece at those same dimensions we'll drill and tap four quarter inch holes. This end will be just drilled straight through for the uh, three eighths bolt. So let's turn over to the mill now and get started doing this. Okay, this swing arm is probably going to be our simplest piece. No threading involved in this. So we'll go ahead and get this knocked out of the way. And like I say, we're going to locate one of these center punches here. And I'm going to do that just with a, a simple little pointer. Hey, what? I think I'll move that to the, about to the center device. All right, we're going to call that center right there. I will zero out the X and Y axis. And we want to come 0.615 uh, from the center. That's That'll put us about halfway between the hole and the outside dimension. And these are going to be quarter inch clearance holes for the bolts. And I think we should be able to drill these without having to use a starter drill, center drill. All right, we're going to move 0 0.615. Now we'll move 615 on the other side of the zero. We'll come back to zero on the y-axis. Now we'll go 615 in each direction on the x-axis. Now we'll locate this, our other uh, four and a quarter inches over. Should be the same on the y-axis. We'll just bring this over 
and we'll drill a lead hole with a quarter inch drill that's already in. And now we'll replace this out with a 3 8 All right, other than some deburring, that should be all on, on this swing arm piece. I will get our uh, work piece mounted in and bring it right back. All right, just like we did this swing arm piece with the four holes, 0.615 off the center, we're going to do the same thing on here. But this time, it's going to be drilled, it's going to be with the tap drill. And to, to get that centered up, I'm simply going to use the drill that I used uh, to actually bore that hole. All right, and we'll call that center right there. Remember, this is a can crusher. So I'll zero out the DRO. I'm using my little caddy that we made in a video not, I guess about one or two videos back. All right, from center, I lock the X and on the Y, 615. Okay, that's our four holes drilled and tapped. I'll get it set up to uh, uh, drill and tap for our grub screws and bring it right back. All right, I've got a work stop clamped onto the device right here so that I don't have to locate center but once. Um, we'll tap our work up against that, then tighten it down. We'll use our edge finder to find the center on the X axis. Now, as far as the center on the y-axis, I'm going to go off-center just just a little bit on that uh, to get as close to some flat spots that's on that shaft as possible. Right there should be fine on the y. Alright, that should have our per X centered. As I said earlier, I wanted to get another grub screw at 90 degrees to that one. Now this is not anything that will fit in a collet. So what I'm going to do 
I'll take this out for right now. I'm going to screw a uh, quarter twenty by about six inch long bolt in that. Bump it up to the work stop. And now I'm just going to eye this with some of the other parts of the machinery here. And that's plenty close enough for, for a can, can crusher. That's not dead on three and a half there. And I'm not sure I could have measured it any closer. All right, so we'll tighten down. We're up against our work stop now, so we should still be on center. We'll get this out of the way. And just like before, we'll drill and tap for the quarter 20. This little caddy is working out pretty good right here. I may, I don't know, but I may come right back here and embed a magnet in the uh, in the aluminum in the tray just so it kind of clamps up and holds in position. It, it's wanting to, to rattle just a little bit now, and I don't like rattles. Uh, I think that's all the drilling and tapping we'll need to do. And I'm going to leave everything set right where it's at and I'm going to try this over on the motor and then I'm pretty sure we're going to come back and put a 530 seconds through hole for that pin. That'll just give a little extra holding. All right, I've decided I do want to put the pin all the way through and I want it to go between the uh, two grub, grub screws. And I've got my angle cube sitting right here, and I've got it. All right, I zeroed it out. Now I want to set this on about 45 degrees. <laughs> that guess there was 47 degrees. 44.8. I think that's good. I've got it backed up to the work stop over here. So it should still be on center. And I'm going to try to uh, drill this without a center drill. If it starts to wander at all, I'll come back and put the, uh, the center drill in. No, it's going to go. And we want to drill this all the way through both sides. Alright, I think we're ready to mount this back on the motor. I need to deburr those edges right there just a little bit. Uh, but then I'll meet you back over at the workbench. Okay, note to self. Camera records a whole lot better when you push that uh, button and the little red light comes on. But I got the pin installed in. I'll swing it around. You can see it comes all the way through to the other side. So now let's put our grub screws in. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of thread lock on these. Now we're ready to see if our holes line up, which I have no reason to believe they wouldn't. A little thread lock in here as well. Ordinarily I wouldn't be using uh, straight slotted screws, but that's just what I've got an overabundance of in this length. Alright, I'm going to get this set back up on the uh, uh, can crusher, and then I'll bring you back for a quick recap. I've got the gear motor uh, mounted back on the uh, can crusher frame now. And I hope you can see that's turning a whole lot straighter line than the uh, warp pulley and, and arm did. 
told you at the beginning of this video I would uh, give you a quick little rundown of, of this uh, Pittman, Pittman rod uh, can crusher. As you know, the uh, gear motor down here with the uh, eccentric arm is on and off switch over here. The crusher block is nothing more than a piece of 4x4 four four that I trimmed down uh, to slide in and out of, of this trough. This, of course, is where the cans drop in. The Pittman rod itself is nothing more than a turnbuckle uh, that I got in a box lot of stuff at an auction many, many years ago, probably 20 years ago. Uh, and it worked out just right because I uh, uh, fixed this piece on the end of the block and this U part works on there, works well on that. And then at the other end, on the motor end, just a round piece, and that's a piece of all uh, plastic pushed in there. The log splitter itself on the bottom side has a has a hole in here. I called it a log splitter. Uh, that's about how old this is. The can crusher has a hole in the bottom where the crushed can falls out of. I've got a little hole in the side over here that's just to uh, can get stuck or whatever, I can stick a screwdriver in there and knock it out. So let's slide it back together right quickly. And by the way, that uh, turnbuckle being used as a pitman rod uh, worked out excellent when I built this uh, as far as using it to determine what the length of the pitman rod needed to be. And instead, after uh, after finding that length, I really had no other use for the turnbuckle, uh, so I just continued to use it as a pitman rod. This is a lock nut on the end of this bolt here. All right, and that's the way it works. As you can see, I hope you can see down here at this end. This is all turning a whole lot better than it was with the old one. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.